Thank you. Thank you so much, TJ. The October 20th, 2020 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, this meeting is being, being held virtually under the Open Meetings Act of Georgia. Board of Commissioners, as noted in yesterday's work session, Governor Kemp's emergency orders have been extended until November 9th. Therefore, we will continue to monitor this vital situation and adhere to all the precautionary measures to reduce the community spread of this unpredictable uh, virus. Board of Commissioners, please allow me to start with roll call. Please acknowledge your presence uh, accordingly. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. Vice Chairman and District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. Okay. And Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones. Present. All of us all present and accounted for. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. This evening, we are pleased to have with us uh, Fire Chief Scott Spencer here to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, Board of Commissioners, I ask that you please recite the pledge to the flag in unison. Uh, Chief Spencer, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Lord, today with hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, you've blessed us in so many ways as a county and as a country. Amen. And we just thank you for that. Lord, I want to ask a special blessing on each of our commissioners tonight. Commissioner Mitchell, Commissioner Robinson, Commissioner Carthen, Commissioner Guider, and our chairwoman Jones. Just, uh, Lord, be with them. Give them the guidance that you would have for them. Give them wisdom, give them discernment as they make decisions that affect our county on a daily basis. Lord, they've got a tough job, and sometimes uh, we, we tend to forget that they're they're representing us, uh, but, but they have a heavy burden. So, Lord, we just ask that you be with them uh, as they make decisions. Lord, I just want to thank you for uh, this county, what it's meant to me, uh, what it means to the people here in this county, for our state and for our nation. Lord, as we go into this election season, uh, there's lots of stuff that, that folks are talking about and thinking about. But Lord, we know that regardless of who the president is, we know who our king is, and that's you. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for sending him to die on the cross for each one of us. Now, all these things we ask in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, could you please join me with the Pledge of, with the pledge of Allegiance in unison? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the public for with this stand, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Liberty. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Uh, really appreciate you and to the citizens of douglas county appreciate you as well and we uh, really appreciate your participation in our board of commissioners meeting meetings thank you so much uh, fire chief spencer for that wonderful uh, prayer tonight and you're right uh, the power of prayer is irrefutable and we thank you so much tonight board uh clerk do we have public comment tonight any public comment no ma'am we didn't have anyone sign up okay no one signed up thank you signed up okay with that being said board of commissioners we'll go right into the approval of the minutes board of commissioners you have the minutes of the commission meeting of october 6 2020 the work session minutes of october 5th 2020 and the executive session minutes of october 5th 2020 are there any corrections uh, additions or deletions that need to be made okay being none minutes stand approved as presented thank you all so much board of commissioners we we're going to move right into our agenda tonight. We have proclamations. We have a total of one, two, three, four proclamations tonight. I'll start with tab number four. Tab number four is proclaiming the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Douglas County. And Sherry Mathis, our own Sherry Mathis, will read this proclamation. Thank you, Chairman. You're so welcome, Sherry. 
Whereas every year, too many Americans are touched by the pain and hardship caused by breast cancer. And whereas breast cancer is the second most common form of cancer found in women in the United States, and it, it is the leading cause of cancer death for women with one in eight women diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. And whereas more than 2,500 men will likely be diagnosed with some form of breast cancer in 2020. But thanks to early detection and improved treatment options, deaths from breast cancer have decreased significantly in the last decade. And whereas many people have endured the heartbreak of losing someone to breast cancer, and it's the memories of those loved ones that drive us to find a cure. And whereas all women are encouraged to talk to their healthcare providers about mammograms and other methods of early detection, as well as their risk of developing breast cancer and what can be done to reduce that risk. And whereas during the month of October, we remember those lost to this terrible disease and stand strong for those currently facing a breast cancer diagnosis and we strengthen our resolve to do our part in supporting those affected. And whereas by raising awareness of breast cancer and supporting research prevention and early detection, we will, we will move closer to eradicating this disease. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners that October is designated as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we urge all Douglas County residents to spread awareness of this disease, provide support for those affected by this illness and educate others on its prevention and early detection. So proclaimed this 20th day of October, 2020. Thank you so much, uh, Sherry. Our Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation and certainly we uh, thank you, Sherry, for acknowledging how significant it is to address uh, early detection and the things that we need to do, uh, both men and women to be aware of breast cancer. And then again, it is an honor to uh, proclaim this month, October, as Breast Cancer Awareness. Board of, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. The motion was Commissioner Guider. The second was uh, Commissioner Carthen. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate when I call your district, your response. District 1. Yes. District 2. Commissioner Robinson, we can't hear you. Leave you on, I think you're on mute, but I saw your mouth. Yes. Okay. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. Chairman Mona Jackson Jones. Yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote in the motion carries. Thank you so much again. Uh, Ms. Matthews for reading this proclamation. Thank you so much. We're going to tab number five, proclaiming the month of October, October as Behavioral Health Month in Douglas County. And we have Ms. Patty Wink who will re read their proclamation. Ms. Wink, are you on the line? Yes, I am, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. On behalf of CORE, we appreciate being chosen to read this proclamation. Thank you. Douglas County Behavioral Health Month. Whereas behavioral health challenges affect almost every family in America. And whereas people with behavioral health challenges recover if given the necessary services and supports in their communities. And whereas millions of adults and children are disabled by behavioral health challenges every year and whereas stigma and fear of discrimination keep many who would benefit from behavioral health services from seeking help. And whereas good behavioral health is critical to the well-being of our families, communities, schools, and businesses. And whereas greater public awareness about behavioral health challenges can change negative attitudes and behaviors toward people with behavioral health challenges. Now, therefore, Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim the month of October 2020 as Douglas County Behavioral Health Month and call upon all Douglas County citizens 
government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools to recommit our, com our community to increasing awareness and understanding of behavioral health challenges, reducing stigma and discrimination and promoting appropriate and accessible services for all people with behavioral health challenges. So proclaimed this 20th day of October, 2020. Thank you so much, Mrs. Wink, for acknowledging October is Behavioral Health Month. You are so correct. It is a time for us to reconnect and recommit ourselves to increasing awareness about behavioral health, not only in Douglas County, but across this nation. It is so important that we uh, give due diligence to this subject matter because it's very important and it's certainly on the rise in terms of behavioral health issues. Well, Board of Commissioners, you heard the proclamation read by Mrs. Wink. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Chair? Yes, Vice Chairman Robinson. Uh, are there any um, events, and in, in, if we're getting into them in the announcements, but what, what is Behavioral Health Month for us this month? Is, is Madam Tiffany around? Can we talk about that a little bit? What have we traditionally done in Douglas County? And I, I appreciate proclamations, but even if the county is not sponsoring them, what's going on right now in the county that we can just highlight just in the moment? Good evening, uh, Chairman Jones, uh, Commissioner Robinson, Board of Commissioners, County Administrator Mark Till. Um, so this year for Behavioral Health Month, um, we're doing it a little different. We have two virtual events. Our first event was on October the 15th, and we had a panel discussion about, discussion about maintaining healthy relationships in 2020. We thought it was important for people to um, dealing with everything that's going on right now with the pandemic to just re-examine their relationships with themselves, their family members. We talked about caregivers, having healthy relationships as a care caregiver and taking time to uh, just take care of yourself. And another topic was actually um, sobriety. We had um, the director of the outpatient services for our, from our CSB on, and she talked to people who had issues with maintaining their sobriety. And on October 29th, we will be um, having a teen and young adult suicide prevention panel that will fish, feature Commissioner Robinson. It will also feature Judge Cynthia Adams and the vice chairman of our school board, Michelle Simmons, along with teen and young adult members of our community who will be discussing issues going on in their community. Um, and we will also have a special presentation by Willowbrook. So we took a different approach this year, a virtual approach to make sure that we still serve the citizens and brought awareness to behavioral health in our community. And I thank you, Commissioner Robinson, for spearheading behavioral health every year in Douglas County. I feel like this has made a great impact on our community and um, I'm thankful to be a part of it. Thank you. And Chair Yield. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments from the board before we go on? Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please acknowledge your response. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much. We're gonna move on to tab number six, proclaiming September 15th through, through October 15, 2020 as National Hispanic Heritage Month in Douglas County. And we have Maggie Hilera here today. We, because of the pandemic, got a little behind, but certainly wanted to acknowledge uh, National Hispanic Heritage Month here in Douglas County. And so I was just so uh, grateful and um, that uh, Maggie Hilera is here to read this proclamation today. Maggie, are you here? I believe I saw you earlier. Yes, Madam Chair, I am here. Thank you for having me. Um, National Hispanic Heritage Month. Whereas each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And whereas, the observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period. And 
Whereas the day of September 15th is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Mexico and Chile celebrate their independence days on September 16th and September 18th. And Columbus Day, or Dia de la Raza, which is October 12th, falls within the 30-day period. And whereas America's diversity has always been a great strength of our nation, as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we recognize and applaud the extraordinary accomplishments of Hispanic Americans. And whereas from America's beginning, Hispanic Americans have served as leaders in business, government, law, science, athletics, the arts, and many other fields. In 1822, Joseph Marion Hernandez became the first Hispanic to serve as a member of the United States Congress, representing the newly established territory of Florida. And whereas National Hispanic Heritage Month provides an opportunity to recognize the vitality of the Hispanic culture as an integral part of our society and to acknowledge the service of Hispanic Americans to our country, from those who have aided our local communities to those who have served in the armed forces, distinguishing themselves in leadership and courage. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims September 15th through October 15th, 2020, as National Hispanic Heritage Month in Douglas County and join with all citizens in recognizing the many contributions of Hispanic Americans to the United States and to Douglas County. So proclaimed this 20th day of October, 2020. Madam Chair, looks like she's frozen. Yeah. Uh, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Method Joanne Kelly. You got it. All right, Bo Madam Chair, I'll take the floor for right now to keep the meeting moving for business purposes. Um, Board of Commissioners, do you have any comment regarding this resolution? Thank you so much, so graciously, so well spoken. Thank you for that. Board of Commissioners, any commentary before I go ahead and call the motion? All right, if there's no further questions, I'm going to go around the room, um, along the aisle. District 1, Commissioner Mitchell, I'm calling. You got to call the motion first, Kelly. Motion? Okay. Yeah, I'll motion. <laughs> you, yeah. Make a motion, Henry, or not yeah. make a motion? I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion uh, to approve this item on the Thanks. floor. A second. I, all right, we got a, a motion by Commissioner Mitchell. We've got a second by Madam Guider. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If none, we're going to go ahead and call it. District 1, how do you vote? Yes. Yes, vote. District 2, Kelly Robinson, I vote yes. District 3? Yes. District 4, Madam Nider? Yes. Madam Chair, are you still here? All right, based on who's on the floor right now, it's the unanimous passage of the motion 4-0. Ken, did I get that right? Oh, she's back. I, I just I dropped. I'm on the phone now. I had to come in. Madam the Chair. Yeah. yeah, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Robinson, as Vice Chair, served as Chair while you were dropped. The the call yeah. has been made to the vote. The only vote that's ab abstaining or hadn't haven't been made is yours as to the proclamation <laughs> regarding it was just read into the record. So, uh, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if you could finish the vote and ask Madam Chair for a vote, close this and turn it back over to the Chair. That would be appropriate. That, that was, it was timing was perfect. So, Madam Chair, I just passed Madam Guider. She said yes. So, how do you vote regarding this proclamation? Yes. Okay. We now I amend my prior statement from 4-0 to being 5-0 for all people being seated. The, the proclamation and the motion passes. Madam Chair, I now yield the floor back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. And techno, I, I love technology when it works. I apologize, everyone. I'm coming in through the telephone now. All right, and again, it is so an, it's an honor to proclaim uh, September 15th through October 15, 2020, as National Hispanic Heritage Month in Douglas County. And thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Hilera, for coming in to read the proclamation today. We're going to move on to tab number seven, proclaiming October 18, 2020, as Kappa Alpha Psi Day in Douglas County, and that'll be read by uh, our own Commissioner Terenia Carson of District Three. Commissioner Carson, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Chairman Jones. Um, to my brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, it is my honor to present this proclamation to you. Whereas the Douglas County Georgia Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of civic organizations and their impact on society locally and perpetually. And whereas Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, originally founded on the campus of Indiana University, January 5th, 1911, is a civic organization consisting of collegiate and alumni chapters dedicated to the development of its members, fashioning achievements at its purpose. Kappa Alpha Psi began by and continues by uniting college men of culture, patriotism, and honor in a bond of fraternity dedicated to achievement in every field of human endeavor during collegiate years and after graduation. And whereas the Carrollton Douglasville alumni chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, since its founding on June 17, 2005, has created a legacy of service to the communities of the West Georgia counties of Carroll and Douglas and provides oversight for member leadership, development, and community guide right programs in the community and through its supervision of a collegiate chapter, Theta, Theta Kappa at the University of West Georgia whereas members have consistently and unswervingly served the citizens who make up the surrounding communities since October 18, 1975. And whereas the Douglas County Georgia Board of Commissioners recognizes the impact of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated in general, and the Carrollton Douglasville alumni and Theta Kappa chapters in particular. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Douglas County Georgia Board of Commissioners meeting in regular session that the Sunday, October 18th, 2020, representing 45 years of achievement for the Theta Kappa chapter be declared Kappa Alpha Psi Day in Douglas County, Georgia. To make all citizens aware of the benefits of civic organizations and their contributions towards the stability of communities within our county, the men of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated remain dedicated to the evolution and extension of its future in times of heightened society, conflict, and worldwide pandemic through the development of role models and leaders for today and into the future who aspire to achieve in every field of human endeavor. So proclaim this 20th day of October, 2020. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carson. Madam Chair, uh, mm -hmm. may, may I have the floor? One more. Yes, Will you? you may have the floor. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Carthen, so eloquently as my sister in the community. Thank you so much. Um, very well said and received on behalf of the Brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi, in which I am a member. That being said, Madam Chair, if it so pleases you, we have some members of Kappa Alpha Psi locally that are here as is our custom, which is not our first time, but to allowing them to have a moment just to say hello and greetings, but also have one chief spokesperson that's going to speak. So, Mr. Bobby Fryer, um, I want you to introduce yourself and all the other brothers that are with you, and you will have the floor for exactly three minutes. Thank you. Hello? Okay. Yes. Can everyone hear me? You're fine. Okay. Thank you, Brother Robinson. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Bobby Fryer. I'm currently serving as the Vice Pole Mark or the Vice President of the Carrollton Douglasville Alumni Chapter of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, it was so elegantly read uh, about the proclamation. We thank you so very much. Um, on the call with me is the current Pole Mark as well, who is uh, Brother Harold Lawson. Uh, we also have Brother Wayman Bryant, Brother Fred O'Neill, Brother Sam Klontz, and Brother Vincent Dawson, who are all Theta Kappa initiates at West Georgia College, which is now known as the State University of West Georgia. Uh, briefly about myself, uh, I am a 1989 initiate of the Theta Kappa chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, this is my 31st year as a member a life member. Uh, currently, uh, I am serving again as Vice Polmark uh, with Carrollton Douglasville. As a 17-year-old freshman, when I arrived at West Georgia, I didn't know much about fraternities. And I was approached by a brother 
named Robert Watkins, uh, who first approached me about interest into the fraternity. Uh, that brief meeting, which occurred not even two hours of me arriving on campus, down at a basketball court, uh, launched one of, one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my life, which is to be a part of this grand fraternity. Uh, since then, uh, I've carried over into helping charter the Carrollton Douglasville Alumni Chapter. Uh, and just to briefly give you an idea of some of the things that we are involved in and that COVID-19 will not stop us from continuing to do uh, in the Douglas County area. We currently serve Douglas and Carroll County areas. Uh, Carroll, Carroll County areas. Uh, we have also participated in numerous activities, numerous civic activities such as back to school, uh, backpack uh, events, battered women's shelters, Thanksgiving baskets, adopt the highway, and the number one program, as we like to highlight, uh, is our Kappa League and our Guide Right program, which involves student mentorship. Uh, we, are, we are continuing to be involved in these activities, even though uh, it is a virtual environment for our meetings, but we will continue to be active in the Douglas and Carroll County areas, uh, and we are extremely grateful and thankful uh, for this proclamation. Uh, our fraternity is committed to achievement in every field of human endeavor. And on behalf of the Theta Kappa chapter of, Carroll, of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, as well as the Carrollton Douglasville Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, we are honored uh, for this proclamation. And I thank you for listening uh, and, and giving us this, this grand achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Uh, and and I'll, I'll make these closing comments. When you think about me being a member as well, but think about your personal faith as Chief Spencer rendered earlier. And if you think about sort of family and decisions you have to make, you think about your, your friends, um, you, you, you think about the things that you're involved regarding your freedom being an American. Um, fraternity was for me personally was also one of those defining moments where everything rises and falls with relationships. When you when you talk about what, what wasn't being said is that it, it's the bond is about iron sharpening iron. Men making men, mentoring younger people that are your peers, your contemporaries, and extend that 45 years later to, to understand what that meant. I can only say it today. It made the difference. It brought out the better part of you. It made you perform at much, much higher levels that you normally would not have. And I cannot explain it, but it's all about the process. We talk about process here locally and stuff, but it, it, it matters. It's your approach and how you touch the next generation and extend it forward. And so I appreciate what Kappa Alpha Psi doesn't just stop at a collegiate level. It, it continues on. It's a lifelong journey. So to all the brothers, I thank you so much. We won't labor this. We must keep it going. I, I had to stay within my three minutes. But thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Board of Commissioners, for considering this proclamation. And I yield the floor back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments before I call uh, for a motion? And also, I would just like to add and congratulate uh, Kappa Alpha uh, Psi as well for all the 45 years of uh, tremendous services that you provided to Douglas County, Carroll, and Paulding. Your body of work has not gone unnoticed. You've made a major contribution to our community, and we so dearly appreciate everything that you do. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve this proclamation? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your district, indicate with a response. Uh, district 1, Commissioner? Yes, vote. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District... <laughs> Chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the response is a unanimous with a yes. All right, and the motion carries, Board of Commissioners. Thank you again, Kappa Alpha Psi. We appreciate Thanks, everything Madam that you did here in Douglas nice. County. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on next to new business, which is the reappointment of Janet Payne to the Behavioral Health and Developmental, Developmental Disabilities. Board effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a, a motion to approve this reappointment? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your district, please indicate your response. District one. Yes, vote. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman Simona Jackson Jones. Yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, board members. We're going to move on next to our consent agenda, tab number nine. Uh, we'll start with tab number nine. Please um, be mindful that all items are subject to this final legal review. Tab number nine is resolution in support of Gaynar um, Land and Water Conserva uh, Conservation Fund grant for Bear Creek Nature Preserve. Tab number 10 is authorization to apply for CJCC grant for law enforcement officer surveillance for the period beginning January 1 through June 30th, 2021 in the amount of $26,000 to be used to help fund our surveillance officers for the state court DUI drug court program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and no match is required. Tab number 11, authorization to accept a Victims of Crime Act, VOCA, continuation grant in the act in the amount of $359,937 and no matches required again from the uh, Prosecuting Attorneys Council PAC and Georgia Crime Justice Coordinating Council CJCC and authorize the chairman to sign all necessary documents. Tab number 12. Authorization to approve a change order number six submitted by integrated construction for installment of five sets of pickleball lines on the Deer Lick tennis courts at a total cost of $4,305 funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13, authorization to approve a change order submitted by Headley construction in an amount not to exceed $75,000 for the addition of an aluminum, um, aluminum 18 by 46 screen porch to the new senior center funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Last but not least is tab number 14, authorization to approve the 2021 schedule for work sessions, commission meetings, planning and zoning board meetings, and variance hearings. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion in a second. Any discussion on any particular item before I move forward? Madam Chair. Uh-huh, Commissioner. Was, was re resolution for Tammy Howard removed uh, I couldn't print out the, anything this afternoon because of a technical thing. Yes, ma'am. It was removed. It wasn't even on the work session agenda yesterday. It, okay. Well, it was on the one I printed out evidently. There was a, a new one that came through. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure we didn't leave it out. Yes, ma'am. I yield okay. back. Okay. Any other? Yes, ma'am chair. Okay. Vice Madam Chair, Chair yeah, to, to, to okay. Madam Guider's point that she she broached the subject, um, um, I too was looking for that that resolution, but it's my understanding that it will be um, presented during the Constitutional Officer Retreat meeting later this week, which is probably a more appropriate um, um, place to do it. So I, I was looking for it, but I also heard it was going to be pre presented to us during then. So I just want to concur with her the interest in it. Um, just where do you do it um, appropriately? Um, I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other any other questions? Yes, uh, Chairman Jones. Um, yes, uh, um, Commissioner Carthen. I'm finally back online, y'all, and I apologize. You, you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have a question regarding um, item number 14 on the consent agenda, mm -hmm. authorization to approve the 2021 schedule. Yes. I just wanted to know, um, is that schedule in both English and Spanish, given we just celebrated Hispanic Month? That's a great point, Commissioner. Certainly that's something we can make happen. I'll allow the clerk to respond and then we, we will go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, clerk Watson, can you respond to Commissioner Carthen's question? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, Commissioner Carthen, no, it is not currently in Spanish. Um, we can, um, of course, make that happen. So I will get with Rick or whoever I need to get with to make that happen. Okay, that would be wonderful. Yes, um, okay. And my only other item was regarding the the change order for integ integrated construction. Um, tab number 13, authorization to approve. Is someone on for the senior center? Okay, now that, that's tab number, yeah, you're right, 13, but it's Hetley Construction, yes. Hetley, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Hetley Construction, Dr. not integrated. Gilchrist, are you on the line, Dr. Gilchrist? I don't think she's- So, Madam, Madam Chair, yes. uh, Consuela had to, had to leave. She had a, uh, so the Citizens Government Academy at 6.30. Yes, okay. So, she had to leave. Okay. But I, I can answer, or should be able to answer any questions you have. Well, if you can, just give the citizens um, what we're doing in regards to the $75,000 addition that will be added to the Senior Center. And if you can just kindly give us an update on the Senior Center while you're in there. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So the Senior Center is getting really close to being uh, uh, completed. You know, currently our Woody Fight Senior Center is closed uh, because of coronavirus. Um, so we haven't decided when we will open up but we should get the keys pretty soon. So this porch, this, it's, um, it would be a covered screened in porch and it is within budget. And uh, it's approximately, I think, uh, so it's on one side of the, uh, of the building. And con Dr. Gilcrest was not involved during the, the original plans Actually, there was a porch on the original plans. It was taken off because of the pool addition. I said, but uh, as far as Consuela, and she's been talking to some of the uh, citizens in that area, and so they proposed the porch. We got the prices, and we are still within budget. Thank you. And Director Teal, um, this will be coming out of SPLOS funds, correct? Yes, ma'am. The entire project is PLOS funds and it is under budget. And it is under budget. Thank you yes, so much for the update. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. All right. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please cast your vote accordingly. District 1? Yes, folks. District 2? Affirmative. District 3? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a five unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on to the approval of expenses, tab, number, uh, tab 15 through uh, 17. Board of Commissioners, you have, you have had an opportunity to review the expenses. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second when I call your district, Let's, uh, we will approve accordingly. District one? Approved, yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, before I yield to our Communications Director, Rick Martin, I wanted to um, give you the opportunity if you had some announcements. Do you have any announcements tonight that you would like to make this evening? Okay. With that being said, I'll yield to our Communications Director, Rick Martin. Uh, Rick Martin, you have the floor for the announcements. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, staff, for tonight's announcements. Just wanted to announce uh, advanced voting. Douglas County Board of Elections and Registration began advanced voting on October 12th here at the courthouse and have opened up other uh, precincts in the county as well that include Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, Dalek Park, Dog River Library, the Old Courthouse, Woody Fight Senior Center. Hours of operation from 8 to 6. The only Saturday voting will occur on Saturday, October 24th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we do have four locations uh, opened on Saturday, October 4th as well. 
Uh, all that information is on our website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. The Georgia Department of Transportation contractors uh, will close Post Road Bridge over Dog River Reservoir uh, beginning uh, just actually this week, October 16th, for approximately six months uh, for bridge replacement. This is part of their announcement that they made some months ago. During the closure, traffic will be detoured around and uh, you know that information will be on the roadways when motorists approach. Uh, road signage will alert the drivers of the closure and detour in advance. The closure and detour are being installed to help ensure safety of the workers. Weather and on-site conditions permitting could impact the delay as well. And again, this is six months according to GDOT and expected to uh, be completed in April of 2021. Contractors from GIOT are also scheduled to reduce traffic access to the Tyson Road Bridge over I-20 to one lane. Uh, that began October 19th, but that's just for about 90 days. One single lane will remain open to traffic. The closure will provide safety for workers and drivers in the area while bridge rehabilitation activities are performed. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners will hold their annual constitutional officers elected officials meeting Friday, October 23rd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This will be held virtually on Teams and will be streamed on Douglas County Happenings Facebook page, DCTV23's Facebook page, and citizens will have access to CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Trick or treat at the Douglas County Courthouse and trunk or treat with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office outside the courthouse are both canceled due to COVID-19. And due to election day on Tuesday, November 3rd, the next Board of Commission meeting will be held on Thursday, November 5th. That's Thursday, November 5th at 10 a.m. The work session will remain on the same schedule date of Monday, November 2nd. That completes this evening's announcements. Madam Chair, I yield back to you. Okay, I believe you have one remaining. It was uh, joined Commissioner Kelly Robinson and his behavior uh, health. That's right, that's right. My apologies. I printed an old and not the revised version. That's right. Um, everyone is invited October 29th, 6.30 p.m. to join Vice Chair Commissioner Robinson's October Behavioral Month event. Uh, this will be on the Facebook page, uh, External Affairs Facebook page, but also streamed as well on Douglas County Happenings. Again, October 29th, 6.30 p.m., Vice Chair Commissioner Robinson's October Behavioral Month event. That completes this evening's announcements. Again, my apologies. Sincere okay. apologies to the vice chair and uh, I yield back to you, Madam Chair. OK, thank you so much, uh, Director Martin, uh, our communications director. Board of Commissioners, if you don't have any announcements, I just would have my closing remarks. It's again, happy 150th birthday, Douglas County. Uh, we certainly had a celebration on Saturday. Saturday was our actual birthday. And as again, I can repeat what Commissioner Mitchell said, and he did a great job hosting the event the event for us. And thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell and all our Board of Commissioners who participated. Thank you, all of you all participated in all our elected officials and our governor. And we had our uh, U.S. Congressman. We had a plethora of uh, participants and, of course, our citizens, number one, who, who had an opportunity to just enjoy this virtual birthday party. Again, as I did apologize in the Chapel Hill News interviews, uh, uh, this certainly is something beyond our control, the pandemic, and we had some big plans for the county. But of course, uh, maybe 2021 will allow us to have an after party of something of that sort. But right now, we, we, are, we need to remain uh, vigilant with this uh, virus and do the right thing by just uh, continuing to host things, uh, our uh, events, virtually. So again, happy birthday. And again, have some cake and ice cream on the Board of Commissioners in your private homes. And hopefully one day we'll be able to celebrate very soon and blow out 150 candles. Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County, I'm pleased to announce that we have a 100% count on our census. Um, and thank you everyone who participated. 
and uh, we appreciate your civic duty. This allows us to secure the uh, appropriate funding needed to carry us forth for the next 10 years. So thank you again, citizens uh, who participated and everybody participated. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And then certainly we, we don't want to take our eye off this moment with COVID-19. COVID-19 is uh, certainly still uh, very much present in the community and all over the nation. And right now we have 3,960 citizens in Douglas County who's tested positive. We have 454 citizens who have been hospitalized. And sadly, 70, 72 of our own citizens have uh, died as a result of this, uh, this uh, virus and our hearts go out to their families. I will uh, encourage you to continue to wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day. Watch your social distancing and please as recommended by CDC wear a mask. It's so important and I, I would like to commend our citizens who I, when I'm out and about I'm noticing everyone is um, they're in compliance with the thought process of wearing a mask to protect our respiratory system. That is so important, so thank you for doing so. Well, with that being said, I wanna say this in final words, we certainly cannot take this virus lightly because if we take it lightly, it will take us and we don't want that to happen. So we appreciate everything you're doing in the community to just keep your eye on this virus and as we go forward to do the right things to for, uh, to certainly eliminate and prevent the mitigation of this uh, virus throughout the uh, county. Well, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this body and also the citizens of Douglas County, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much and good night. <laughs>